Jeremy, how are you doing today? I know I'm great, people, but... Andrew. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, too. Uh, welcome, everybody, to a live episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This is, in fact, a Q&A episode where all of the content is driven by you, the audience, and I don't know about anything ahead of time. Andrew collects it and puts it out and I have five minutes to answer and we talk about some other stuff while we're doing it. So thanks for coming by. Thanks for being here. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Andrew. Yeah, here we are. We're, we're just chilling today. We're here. We're doing it. Uh, for those that may be listening, we're actually not in the same location today. So if our audio sounds a little different uh, than it normally does, that's why. Uh, but uh, yeah, here we are doing another live Q and A. I've got a bunch of questions. I, I got I have more than four questions, although we're only going to do four. Okay. Uh, but we are uh, you know excited to to be able to bring this to you guys live at a scheduled time. It's our first great. time scheduling this. Yeah, yeah, kind of cool. So if you are in the chat and you want to say hi, feel free. Uh, you know, type in the chat. I'll see it, uh, and we can chat about it. If you have any questions, let me know. I can ask Jeremy. We've got more people watching live than we usually do at this point. So I think us planning ahead was a good thing. Yeah, yeah. At 12.15, it was like people start their lunch break at 12. They had a couple times to get ready. Quite often, there yeah. With yeah. their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and whatever. Mm. Here's the question. If you had to design the worst peanut butter and jelly sandwich, bread, peanut butter, jelly, what would you do? Okay, it would be cinnamon raisin bread. Uh-huh. Extra chunky peanut butter, uh huh, and orange marmalade. I'm with you on the marmalade. I actually like the other two. Yeah. See, for me, it would be like orange marmalade. It would be like pumpernickel, which I actually really like pumpernickel bread, but just not for a PB and J. Yeah. And then the peanut butter would be like the. Actually, you know, you know what would be? It'd be the really crummy, like, peanut butter and jelly, like the goober in the single uh, jar. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. it would be some, like, weird version that had marmalade. Because that that's not good peanut butter, and you're just like, ah. Yeah. Just all, yeah, yeah. yeah all for sugar. me, cinnamon raisin bread is is just kind of a breakfast thing, which, by the way, so Gabe, good, uh, Gabe is here having breakfast with us. Yeah. Nice. Hi, Gabe. I'm guessing uh, Gabe isn't having PB&J, though. No, no. I did do cinnamon raisin bread um, for a, a, a tuna melt once. Oh, no. Yeah, just because it, no. well, it was on the oh, air. Oh, oh. Oh, that sounds awful. Uh, all right. All this food, all this talk of food as Dennis talking about what's a lunch break? <laughs> Those went away with the eight hour work day thanks to the pandemic. Oh, uh, well. All right. So, uh, are you ready for your first yeah. question? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. So your first question is uh, from Stacy, and I can show it on the screen here. I love that. Calligraphy, music, and writing used to be part mm -hmm. of the training within martial arts. What do you think of incorporating traditional art into a martial arts curriculum in a more overt way from mm -hmm. Stacy Grove? It's a great question. The first place my brain goes is Caboeta. Because if you know Caboeta, you know that in understanding of the music, how to construct the music, the relationship of the, between the music and the practice um, is, is critical to a full understanding of what Caboeta is. And I think that that is awesome. I can't speak to it much more than that because my exploration of Caboeta was, was fairly limited and my understanding of the music was minimal because that was sadly not important at the school that I was attending. It was something that was held back for quite a while. But I think when, when we, if we look at martial arts as not a single thing, but a set of skills, one of which being understanding, patience, creativity, right? We start to see that traditional arts, non-martial arts, painting, music, whatever, have a lot of carryover. There's a lot of value there. If you can learn how to play a musical instrument, any musical instrument, you're going to understand timing. Andrew, we, we've talked about this on the show. Your experience drumming gives you an advantage when it comes to 
sparring and understanding the timing that people inevitably fall into because you can pick up on timing. And so that's where my brain starts to go. Is it something that I think people are generally going to be receptive to? No, but I do see a lot of value. And I think it's something that if I were to ever implement, it would be something that would be reserved for upper ranks and there would be some choice in there. It wouldn't be in order to earn this rank, you have to reach a competency level with this, with calligraphy. It would be, okay, so if you're going to test for your second degree, I need you to learn a new extra martial skill outside of martial arts skill that you did not start until you earned your first degree black belt. You know, I don't want somebody to say, oh, you already knew how to play guitar, so you're going to play guitar as an example. But okay, maybe you know how to play guitar. I want you to paint. And the focus not being on any demonstrable level, but the willingness to invest the skills developed through martial arts training and finding a different uh, uh, implementation, utilization of those skills. That's a it's a great question that Stacy has, yeah, and I agree. Know, we've always heard or seen in movies that samurai also did uh, flower arranging and poetry yeah. and things like that, and it's not something outside of capoeira that I you typically see. Um, yeah. You know, music obviously is incorporated in that. You know, the only other place you you could argue it's seen is in musical forms that to some degree has that, that sure. collaboration, but it isn't often the musician making the music or, or, you know, right. Putting it together in that way. So that's, that's interesting. I like that. And that was a good mm. answer. Thank you. I'm curious what other people uh, thought of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's good. Um, let's talk about, uh, you know, we, we do have a, a handful of people watching right now uh, and, you know, people are digging it in order to for us to keep doing this sort of thing to keep doing live episodes and honestly to keep doing what we're doing it, 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 sad to say it costs money what this costs money <sighs> yeah it internet does. access and streamyard and hosting fees and domain fees and all of these other things cost money yeah it does sorry to say yeah uh where am I taking this? Which one? Are we talking oh, about Patreon? Yeah, let's talk about Patreon. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, welcome to my brain right now. Uh, so Patreon is has been a lot of fun because I get the opportunity to do different stuff. Like I, I put out a video today that, I'll be honest, really had very little to do with martial arts. It has everything to do with martial arts, but it wasn't a martial arts video. And it's already gotten a bunch of feedback. I don't know if you had the chance to check it out. It went live like an hour ago. No. But that's one of the things that I like about the Patreon. And we're constantly looking for ways to make the Patreon more valuable. For example, uh, a week from tomorrow, we're doing a live Zoom. You know, we're, we're, we, we've tried a few different things looking for like a, a live semi-private sort of a thing. And this is where we've ended up. You know, we'll have a Zoom that's just for the Patreon people only so they can get to know each other better and we can do questions and just really kind of have a fun time with it. But I think the, the piece I want to continue to highlight with our Patreon, a lot of you out there are martial arts school owners. We have added enough things in there that you have absolutely zero issue writing this off. In the, in the two top tiers, you get access to a school owner's mastermind, which I administer monthly. And the value that you're gonna get coming back from that is, is gonna blow the doors off what you're spending. And you get a tax deduction on what you're spending. If you're not a school owner, you know you get bonus episodes, audio, video, and at every tier, all but the bottom, the bottom, you can get in for two bucks a month and you still get access to the Zoom. But at $5 a month and up, you get merch stickers and shirts and hoodies and wall art, exclusive stuff that we don't do anywhere else. So uh, we have we had two new people join last month. We very rarely have people drop out because we are hell-bent on delivering as much value to the Patreon as we can. So yep. patreon.com slash whistlekick. 
Awesome. Uh, so let me hide that. There we go. Um, we have uh, a question came in from a listener that's watching right now. So I say listener, a person that's watching right now. Um, I don't think we have to put this in our official five minute because I think it'll be a little a pretty quick to answer. But Dennis had a question. Have you ever had to use your martial arts training in a non-self-defense scenario? Depends on how you define training. I think the way most of us would define training, we would answer yes every day. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, pretty much every winter, I, I slip and fall on the ice. <sighs> yep. And so I have you know, multiple times slipped and fall, fell. Uh, and you know, use my my break fall from from judo jujitsu to make sure I don't hurt myself. So mm -hmm. I definitely use it all the time. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I yeah, don't know it's if that's a silly answer from you, Dennis. But the 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 physical aspects are pretty pretty tangible. And when you start to think about the mental emotional aspects of martial arts training, it becomes quite obvious that we are using those almost every day. Yeah. The world's a tough place. It beats us up metaphorically, literally, and what better skill set to have access to than our martial arts skills to evade, deflect, overcome, et cetera. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So our next question, uh, actually, Dennis did a comment before I get to that one. Falling on the ice was the exact scenario I was envisioning. Breakfall training has come in handy on more than one occasion. Yeah, absolutely. I I stepped on an Indo board. I don't know if you know those, the, the balance boards. And if it's, I have one that's a little different. And in hindsight, I just stepped on it wrong and it kicked out from under me. And I, and I went down hard, but instead of bracing, I didn't have time to slap because I, I was sideways. I just kind of tucked in and landed from hip to shoulder on a concrete floor with a thin rug over it. I was fine. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, so here's our next official question from Chris Rickard. You must be excited about each free training day, but for different reasons. Mm. What are they? Okay. I'm assuming what Chris is talking about is the fact that we have three this year. Yep. And so th this is – first off, Chris, thanks for the opportunity to talk about free training day because I love talking about free training day. For those of you who have been, you get it. And you're probably just going to nod along and maybe even tune out or go get another piece of cinnamon raisin bread to make a peanut butter jelly club sandwich out of it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but for the rest of you or, or anybody who wants to listen. So we've got three this year. This is our sixth time in New England. And we are also hosting one in Atlanta and Portland, Oregon. I am excited for Atlanta and Oregon for roughly the same reasons. The fact that it is the first time we're expanding something that has been so awesome, so much fun. I walk around free training day and I just, I don't participate much because I'm, I'm, I'm working, but I love being able to see what's going on and, and the, just the smiles on people's faces. It just, it means the absolute world to me. I know that the work we have done that led from free training day up here has been substantial the connections that have been made, et cetera. And so I'm excited to see two more, let's call them hotspots of people who are on board with the Whistle Kick ethos, you know, this connect, educate, entertain, this um, style agnostic valuation of martial arts training and seeing these people come together in these areas, not because they're not already excuse me, there, not because we're changing their minds, but because we're facilitating these connections, right? Connect, educate, entertain. We're facilitating these connections. And there is already discussion for 2023 for at least two more as people hear about them. As we do the work, more people hear about it and they're like, this is amazing. I want this over here. Mm. Because there is an ultimate goal of 12. I would like there to be one a month. We'll see if we get there. Yeah. Um, I am uh, unable to go to Portland, Oregon, or Atlanta, Georgia this year for these events. But if I were going, the things that would be exciting to, to me would be connecting with the people that I already knew in the area and meeting the new people. You know, yeah. people and you know that have been on the show that, that I've mm -hmm. 
quote unquote talked to, but just over email or just over Facebook messenger as I booked them to come on the show and being able to like talk to them in person and see them. I, I think that would be really cool. And, you know, free training day here in Northeast, um, you know, I'm excited for, for different reasons, but mostly it's in my hometown. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. I can roll out of bed and I'm there. One of the things that I think is coolest about free training day is that the majority of people who show up are the quote right people. And when the right people are there, when they meet each other, when I meet them, it doesn't feel like I'm meeting strangers. Yep. And I think a They're perfect example for me is I first met Dennis Campo the Friday night before free training day of last year. Um, I first met Liz at free training day last year. Yeah. And does it feel like you've known those people for 10 months? Oh, nine months? No, not, even, not even close. Yeah. Not even close. So, uh, all right. So let me get rid of this banner here. Uh, Gabe actually said that he's bummed that I'm going to miss. Uh, he's going to miss me. We'll connect again. That's for sure. Yep. For sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, what we talked earlier about Patreon as being a way to help support the show. Um, you know, something else that also really helps is telling other people about what we do. Yeah. You know, not, not just like, hey, friend of mine in class, you should listen to Whistle Click Martial Arts Radio. But you can also help us in the algorithms in the computer world by giving us reviews. I think people underestimate the value of, of reviews, I, I think, because quite often when we're listening to podcasts, we're doing something else, right? We're driving, we're on a plane, we're on a bus, train, whatever. And it might not be a convenient time to leave a review. So it falls by the wayside and we justify like, okay, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. It's not that big of a deal, but it is, it's actually a substantial deal. Uh, it's something that I know from the work that I do, not just for Whistlekick, but for martial arts schools with consulting work that reviews are massive. So there are four places that we, we care about this stuff. Apple podcasts, Google reviews, Facebook reviews and Spotify ratings. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we got two more Spotify ratings in the last month. Thank you. If you don't listen to Spotify, it's easy enough. You just have to put the Spotify app on your device, listen for at least 30 seconds, and then you can leave a rating. We are at a uh, perfect five-star rating. I don't know how long we'll be able to maintain that, but I'm hopeful. So there's four places that you can help us out. And when we get new reviews, we read them on the show. So we've got a new Apple review right here. Uh, and this is from Kansas Kenpo titled Honest Perspectives. It's short enough. Hello, sir. I've been listening for quite some time now. You are my favorite martial arts podcast. Yay! That that seriously is one of the, my favorite things that I hear. I am a Kempo practitioner for the past 17 years and really enjoy your interviews, thoughts, and rapid fire questions. Keep up the good work. I will keep listening. Ms. Higgs from Kansas. Thank you, Ms. Higgs. And just as a reminder to everyone, if you leave a review and we read it on the show, and lately, if you've left one, it's been read on the show. Uh, I, I'd love to see more of them come in. All you have to do, email me, Jeremy at whistlecake.com. I will get you a gift code to the store like money and for you can free? buy things for free. Whoa. So um, Jeremy, are you bribing people to leave reviews? Absolutely. Without shame. Unabashedly. Yep. Absolutely. There you go. All and right. if you want the whole list of all the ways you can help us out, whistlekick.com slash family. Uh, yep. It is right there. Find the full list. Whistlekick.com slash family. Family. Are you ready for your next question? I'm always ready for my next yeah, question. We have two more questions for the day. Okay, do it. All right. This one is from uh, Mr. Matt Nather. Hi, Matt. And your question is, what is the strangest question you have ever been asked as an instructor? Oh. I don't know. That's not something that I'm generally going to commit to memory. Um, bear with me as I try not to fill the space with silence, but also think about things. Um, I think most of us know that if we teach kids, the strangest questions come, come from kids. 
And I know for a fact I've been asked questions that have no bearing on martial arts, but I don't remember them. Yeah. Those would probably be the ones, right? And sometimes, uh, like in the Fun and Friends group, we'll, we'll see people, uh, shout out to Jason, he often posts things from, you know, class last night, a kid said something ridiculous and he posted in there and I love reading those. Um, I got asked once if I poop. And what did you say? I said, yes, everybody poops. It's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't, I can't answer this in a, like a clean output sort of a way. Okay. So, yeah. It happens. It does. That's okay. Uh, uh, maybe, I want it. So I suspect Matt has a great answer to this and I'm hoping that he will contribute it. Oh, at I'm some sure. Point. I'm you sure. Know, fun, post it in fun and friends, dude. Yeah. And you know, when this episode gets posted in the whistle kick, when this actually gets released officially, uh, yeah. podcast that we put in our Facebook group, uh, if you're not uh, a member of the Facebook uh, Whistle Kick behind the scenes group, you absolutely should. Uh, every every episode we get re- that gets released gets posted in there, and there's all really good conversations that happens on mm-hmm. a lot of the episodes. So please do join that. Um, I... What's going on, Jeremy, with products at Whistle Kick? Anything new coming out? So as we're recording this, it is Tuesday, August 30th. I'm taking the next few days off to go away and work on the fall and winter product lines. We have admittedly nothing new coming in terms of training products, you know, no new uniforms, no new gear, anything like that, because we're struggling to deal with the logistical challenges that are afoot right now. We have another order of gear that supposedly is somewhere between the warehouse and here. I don't know. I haven't gotten an update in a couple of weeks, but who knows? But what I found over the last year is that when we make really cool designs beyond the really generic stuff, like what you and I are wearing, very simple, we tend to get much more inter- much more interest. I know that I can't just sit down at my desk and be creative. That doesn't work for me. My creative energy doesn't uh, thrive in this environment. So that's why I'm going away. I'm going to go hit a whole bunch of different stores. Uh, Of course, I have to leave Vermont to do this (laughs) and, uh, and put together the line. So people are going to see some cool stuff coming right now. The, the best, the, the new stuff is the free training day stuff. You know, we've got shirts and hoodies and notebooks and patches with the free training day logo. I'm proud of those logos. Those were, were a lot of fun. Um, and I, were you the one that came up with the mountain idea or was that me? No, it was, it was me. Okay. I thought so. Yeah. Because we had a discussion on what would, for those, we're going to peek behind the curtain a little bit for you guys. Yeah. Uh, You know, we were trying to come up with a logo idea for free training day, just in general. Um, And for Keene, New Hampshire, like what can we do for keen and so there you know there's a thought of well the man in the mountain is known for new hampshire but it fell down a number of years ago so it doesn't really exist anymore right. what is keen known for well not a lot i mean the movie jumanji with robin williams was filmed here that's mm-hmm. kind of cool and there's a lot of stuff from the movie that are still here in town um and so if you are in town for free training day uh and you want to see that stuff let me know i'll, I'll tell you where it is mm-hmm. uh, but like, what else is here in town? And then I found out that Mount Monadnock, which is uh, the next town over from Keene, uh, is the most hiked mountain in the United States. It's actually the second most hiked in the world, uh, uh, according to some sources I found online, the most hiked in the world being Mount Fuji. Mm. Uh, Mount Monadnock is the second most hiked in the world. And the third most hiked in the world, the second in the U.S., is Mount Hood, which is where um right near portland oregon northeast uh, northwest in portland is happening so uh, atlanta georgia also has a, a a mountain that is hiked often though not on the top 10 um which is stone mountain right so it just kind of it just kind of made sense so we made lo- three different versions of the logo one with each mountain yeah but Den- uh, gabe is saying that the logos are all cool but they have the best mountain Hashtag Mount Hood. I, 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 think, I think anybody would have a hard time disagreeing with that. The profile of Mount Hood is 
um, distinctive. I, I was looking for a stronger word. It's it is imposing. Yeah, and to see it in person um, is is incredible. Yeah, it really is. All right, you ready for your last question? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, this last one, a uh, little bit of levity here from Chris Rickard. What Muppet would be the best martial arts instructor and why? I could go with with just about any of them uh, for different reasons. So um, I think it also depends on the on the martial art. So if it was if it was a Krav Maga school, it would be Animal. Okay, because Animal would just be he would fully embrace the the zero to sixty. If if you got to hit somebody, you dive in and you're just you just all over them and you do what's got to be done and you run away. Uh, I feel like Gonzo could be a really entertaining instructor. Uh, probably not Kermit. Interestingly enough, I feel like Kermit wouldn't believe in anything he was saying uh miss piggy would be solid i mean she's the only one that actually does martial arts yeah exactly exactly i mean she's got the high ya down pretty well uh not bunsen or beaker you know the the one that seems like they would probably be the best balance overall but i think would be more limited to Kids classes specifically is Rolf. Rolf the dog. Yeah. Yeah. I could see him being probably the, the most solid. I've known martial arts instructors who might as well have been Rolf. <laughs> They're just less hairy. Okay. So, so you're saying Rolf the dog would make the best martial arts instructor. Uh, here's my follow up. Which would make yeah. the best practitioner? I think it depends. It depends on the art. It depends on what is valued in the art. I'm I'm gonna go with yeah. the prawn because he's got multiple hands, he's got multiple arms and stuff. Who? The prawn. I can't remember his name. You know the little little shrimp guy that's always around. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Like I we 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 worked through the core characters pretty quickly. There's like six to eight of them yeah. that everybody knows, and I was starting to think of the peripheral ones, but I don't remember most of their names. Uh, Craig Wareham has it, unsurprisingly. Pepe the King Prawn. I, I, oh, Craig, I don't even know how you did that. That's impressive. But you're not surprised, are you? No, I'm really not. Uh, I'm not. Dennis, Dennis says no Muppet can match Elmo's energy. Hmm. Now, it's true. He said Muppet. I limited myself to the Muppet show. Me too. I did not pull from Sesame Street, and I could have. Yeah, I... I would make I could make the argument the argument could be made that Sesame Street characters are not Muppets. The argument could be made. I'm not saying that's but what I'm wasn't saying. Jim Henson involved in Sesame Street? That is very that could very well be the case, and that wouldn't surprise me. But to me, Muppets are in the Muppet verse. <laughs> All right. The fact that you just opened the door on what the Muppet verse is and is not is probably going to be the most controversial thing we've ever done on this show, which I find hysterical. That it's probably going to be um, the Matthew Polly episode, mm -hmm. which on YouTube gets the most attention. Yeah. And then after that, it's going to be what is a Muppet? Yeah. Uh, Craig also commented that Stacy calls him Rolf. <sighs> there you go. There you go. I think that there is a fun mental exercise in looking at any set of people, especially in, you know, something uh, uh, fictional and looking at it through a martial arts lens, just like we just did, because you start to see where people's personalities impact their training, or at least our theories on how they do. And I think that's a value. Yeah. Dennis Campo loves the Muppet verse. Yep. Unsurprised. Absolutely. 
All right, that takes care of our four questions. Well, there's only one other comment in here. We were talking about free training day logos that uh, apparently pro wrestler Jake the Snake Roberts was from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. I did not know that. I I know very little about where pro wrestlers are from. That's something Craig also probably knows well as a big fan of pro wrestling. Yeah. So there we go. This, uh, this is going to conclude our live yeah for 19 were 19 i can't believe we've done it this many times i want to thank everybody for coming by if you watch live great if you did not and you want the opportunity to make sure you are following us on facebook it's where we post all of our events the bigger events are difficult to miss as long as you're following us in various places you're going to find out about them but facebook is the place it's easiest to orchestrate events so that's where we coordinate all of them if you want to support us uh the best things to do join the patreon buy something at whistlekick.com with the code podcast15 or get the full list at whistlekick.com slash family that's a page that you've got to type in it is not available by the link and we do that intentionally so uh, andrew i want to thank you for all your work setting this up i want to thank everybody for watching or listening and until next time train hard smile, smile and, and have, have a great, great day, day.